Governor Babajide Songulu has explained reasons for the continued closure of worship centers, insisting that the increase in figures of COVID-19 cases in the state is one of the major reasons. The incident commander of the response team in the state stated this while responding to Pastor Charles Pandey, who highlighted the critical role church leaders could play in observing the COVID-19 protocols. Both men expressed these views during the leadership roundtable organized by Redeemed Christian Church of God Region 11, which was broadcast live on PLOS TV Africa on Saturday. Every of our stakeholder that we can pull back, that we can speak to, right, they are the ones that have the opportunity for us to carry along and be able to slow down the spread. That's all we're, 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 we're communicating. That's all we're asking for. Once the slowdown is achieved, you will be able to flatten it very quickly and the rate of infection will be slowed, the rate of positivity will be slowed down and by extension, the rate of, of, of fatality will also be slowed down. Once all that is happening, right, um, we'll all get back to life. I mean, you said it, it will never, this is the first time anybody in 100 years is witnessing. So something also needs to give. Something needs to give the way we, we worship, something needs to give the way we, re, we, we relate to ourselves, something needs to give the way we, you know, so it's just very, very difficult time. And you said it, that is the topic we're dealing with in very, very uncharted waters. So it cannot be business as usual. It cannot be the same thing. If it demands that we carry our bell and sing and tell these people what we need to tell them, we will do that. You know, I understand and I appreciate that religious leaders are major influencers. There's no doubt about that. Right. But what we're saying is that let's design different modes of communicating this and to ensure that people understand and appreciate this. And I think the very last question you asked me is, when is this big when? Right. Um, I will listen to all of the various stakeholders and we'll make an announcement in another week or two, I mean, less than two weeks, a week or two, once we see that um, the, 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 the prognosis are better for us and probably before the end of the month or early next one or something, we will be able to um, see that the full protocols of coming to worship together will come back very soon. And now joining us is Reverend Chibuzo Ezekiel, founder and lead pastor, Jesus Foundation Family in Manchester, UK. Thanks for joining us, Pastor. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure having you. Uh, we understand that churches in the UK had reopened for some weeks now. Can you quickly just run us through for about 60 seconds how the COVID-19 protocols are observed during services? Well, the church got reopened last week, which was the 4th of July. Uh, before the church was open, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson had five points agenda towards easing down the lockdown. The first one was to make sure that the national health services would not be overwhelmed. And secondly, to make sure that the rate of, of death, the death rate was reducing. And thirdly, the rate of infection was also reducing. And thirdly, to make sure that they had the necessary supplies to meet the demand of the infection, like the PPE and all those operational challenges. And finally, they had to make sure that any adjustments they make to any of the other things will not um, engineer the second pick, which will be very, very dangerous. So with all these things, the churches were not allowed to open. But as soon as the death rate was dropping, the infection rate was reducing, churches were allowed to open. Uh, to open. And then what followed after was there were street um, measures for a church to open. For example, the government have COVID-19 um, risk assessment, which every church must carry. It is permissive, not prescriptive. And it's important we know this, that it is the uh, duty of the pastor to assess the church building to make sure if the church is able to open. Not many churches have opened as it is, even though the government has issued, has allowed us to start, many churches have not yet opened because the assessment, the risk assessment is so stringent and, and it's so broad that you have to make sure that you meet up with each of these things before you can open up. That's the position we have in the UK. For example, in the UK, singing, before you can sing or talk, you have to make sure that people have the protective screen on their faces. If they don't, they come to church and without singing, without talking, and all the social distances measures are fully observed. You're not allowed to talk to anyone who is not a member of your household within church setting.
Okay. So there are quite a number of things, a lot of things that is. So quite a number of people are not even um, happy to go back to church because the, the stringent measures are just there yeah. uh, to curb this COVID-19 infection. Yeah. Let, let's, let's also ask, um, was there any pressure from religious leaders, um, you know, that influenced uh, the decision to reopen? Um, or was it strict? Not at all. Because, you know, the UK not government at all. was safe. There was enough. not any pressure. The religious leader where everybody, because we could use online to stream, everybody was happy, you know, to, to support the government. Because, as you know, in the UK, over 40,000 people died yeah. from COVID-19. So we don't want that to spread. So we had to support the prime minister to make sure that um, these, um, the COVID, COVID coronavirus dies out in our country. Yeah. So that's exactly what we did. There was no pressure. We don't need to pressure rise the prime minister because we can all see what is happening. People are dying. Yeah. Quite a number of pastors have died. Quite a number of um, Christians have also died with this coronavirus. So we're just trying to make sure that um, what all we could do was to use the streamlined services and to also pray that God remove this coronavirus. There was no pressure okay. anywhere. All right. The gospel so, so, was not hindered. So we were still let's, preaching let's bring it, the social media. Let's bring it back home now. You had pastored in Nigeria some time ago, and um, uh, sometimes you also still come to Nigeria. Do you think that churches should be allowed to reopen, especially in a state like Lagos that uh, is the epicenter? Well, this is my take on that. If the rate of infection in Lagos is rising, I think the church should just hold on a bit. If, the, if, the, if it's rising, if people are getting infected by the day, um, the church should hold on a bit because the, there's a number of things. But if there are other things that are opening, for example, if you're opening the market, if you're opening other things, then I think the church, they might reconsider, but put a very stringent rules regarding the opening of the church. Yeah. That is it. Because the, if the, any church that can meet up with these um, COVID-19 standards, then they can allow to meet, but they, they, sh they must observe the social distancing measures that are in place. That is it. So, but if the government is locking down the entire um, city, for example, in the UK, when the entire city was locked down, churches couldn't meet, people couldn't go shopping except to, to supermarket just to go and buy the essential food and all those things. But if you have opened all of that parastatals, all of that things, then you can also put measures to, to regulate the church services to make sure that people are observing the, the, the rules and regulation. But right. pastors, I know a lot of pastors would not open their churches, particularly if the infection rate, rate is okay. rising okay. in, in Nigeria. Much. Thank you very much, uh, Reverend uh, uh, Chibuzato, uh, for joining us, and we hope to speak with you again. Stay yes. safe. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.